Well, a new political publication is being released today which promises a fresh perspective on who really runs the country. The so-called Power Index has been created by Eric Beecher's media group, which runs the online news service Crikey. Investigative journalist Paul Barry is heading up the venture and he joins us now from Sydney. Paul, good morning. I suppose the question on everybody's lips, having heard that, who really does run the country? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. You'd have to hang around for about a year to find out. Come back to the website daily. Um, no, look, our first um, website is going to be about, our first uh, list is going to be political fixers. And so we can certainly tell you who those top ten are. Um, they are clearly people with immense power. Politics obviously has power over a whole series of fields in this country. And the political fixers have the power to, you know, move leaders, get rid of leaders, appoint new leaders, get their own people jobs, um, get their own people um, into positions of power and so on. Who are the top political fixers, therefore? I, I'd imagine those involved in the removal of a certain Prime Minister last year would uh, feature fairly prominently. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of them are the usual suspects, um, people like Bill Shorten, Christopher Pine in the Liberal Party, Nick Minchin, um, David Feeney, you might know a little less of. Um, some of them are surprising, people I've not actually heard of. Um, or hadn't heard of at the beginning. Um, Bruce McIver, for example, who is immensely powerful in Queensland. He's the guy who put the National and Liberal Party together into the LNP. Man who's made a huge number of enemies in a very short political career. Um, there's also a guy called Michael Fotios, who's the kingpin of the Liberals in New South Wales. Um, Don Farrell in South Australia, called the Pope uh, in, the, in, in that state. Very right-wing Catholic, represents the Shoppies Union, huge power in the Labor Party there, basically runs the Labor Party in South Australia. So there's a mixture of, of people we know and people that I think most people won't have heard of. Why are you compiling this index in the first place? Look, um, it's interesting for a start. I think it's fascinating who really runs the place. Um, but I think it's also important. I mean, you look at something like the dismissal of Rudd, um, it was Arbib and Bitar and their polling who first convinced Rudd to abandon the, the emissions trading scheme. That essentially trashed his reputation. They then led or were part of the, the pooch that brought Rudd down. And that's an elected prime minister. The events that, that took place last June have really brought us to where we are, where the dissolution with politics in this country has never been higher. And we've got, um, some say, an unelected government in the sense that it's being, being very heavily manipulated by the Greens and the independents. That came about because of, to some degree at least, the political fixes in the Labour Party. And it's important to know who those people are and how they operate, I think. It's also, as I say, interesting. Uh, who do you hope to use this list, other than the, uh, the, the politicos, the hardcore politicos in Canberra? Look, I use it in the sense of... Um, using it to, to decide who to go and talk to, then maybe it would be politicians, businessmen, uh, lawyers, journalists, you know, professional people. I think to them it, it would be immensely useful and it's going to be, to some degree, a, mu a must-read website for those people. But it's also got a general interest. I think um, you know, there's a whole lot of stories they're going to have and a whole lot of profiles of these people that I think are, are just of interest to the ordinary general reader. You know, people in this country are interested in what goes on. They're interested in politics and why democracy has, to some extent, been uh, taken away from them. I think they want to know who runs the Labour Party, the power of the unions, the power of branch stacking. They want to know about that stuff. You're also looking at categories in the 12 months ahead, uh, like business, the top end of town. Do you, do you think that'll be a harder nut to crack in terms of a lot of the power there is really behind the scenes and not up front? Yeah, look, I, th I think in, in each area you have to ask yourself, um, what do these people have power to do? What decisions can they really swing in their favour? Um, and do they have power outside their particular area? And look, we haven't got to business yet, so I don't actually know the answer to that. But clearly, business is different from politics. In politics, you have the direct ability to get rid of leaders or to put your people into positions of power in the party and to change policies in the country and you know, obviously affect the way the country's run. With business, it's a little bit more um, indirect. But you look at what the, the mining lobby, for example, has had the power to do, you could argue that they played a major part in bringing down Rudd. So clearly the business does have power, if only to, to get policies that they like or to stop policies that they don't like. And, uh, Paul, before you go, reading a brief, a brief preview of your, uh, your list, I'm intrigued to see you say that a lot of the, uh, those wanting to make real power or become really powerful in Australia should take a leaf out of the book of Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, the former US <laughs> president, who really did stop at nothing to get to where he got to. Uh, that's right. I've, one of my favourite stories about Lyndon Baines Johnson is uh, I think he's, he, he, he attaches himself to the Senate majority leader 
Um, even though he, I think, it was in the yeah. Anyway, he but he he finds out who is the most powerful person in the in the particular House of Congress that he's in, and he he makes it his business to be around when that person is around. So when that guy's having lunch on a Sunday, he's there in the lunchroom with him, and he knows what the, he knows what the man also likes, and so he becomes the ever-present amanuensis to this guy, and eventually is treated like a son, and and it it it. Um, it gets him very far in his political career. He's essentially promoted by this man to great heights, and then he then he abandons him in the in the end. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a morally what you'd recommend at all, but he's remarkable in what he would do to get power. I look forward to how the index unfolds over the next twelve months. Paul Barry, thank you for your time this morning. Thanks a lot, Michael.